and welcome back to Divine Lee Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we are here for our weekly sewing tutorial. So we are going to be making this cute little um, iPad or tablet cover bag with handles and a front pocket. This was requested, uh, a, a um, subscriber sent me a email and asked me if I could help her out. And so here I am making this little zipper pouch for your tablet. So it uh, we have all the cutting instructions over on our website so it fits a, a tablet in it that's a 10 inch one okay and it also has a zipper pocket on the front so you can put your charger or you can put some pens in there whatever you want as i said it is a zipper one and it's got handles so it makes it for easy carrying all right so let's get started <laughs> there are just a few things that you're going to need today to make your tablet case um, you're going to need two zippers okay measuring around 14 inches or bigger you're also going to need some fabric you're going to need an exterior fabric and a lining fabric you're also going to need some shape flex 101 or an interfacing that you've got you can use a non-woven one but I always like to use a woven one for my any sort of bag that I do and my favorite brand is Shapeflex 101 but Pelon have some good woven um, not Pelon sorry other brands like Matilda's own and Violene all have wonderful interfacing so if that's all you've got you can use that and you can also use a non-woven um, interfacing but if you do use a non-woven one make sure it is a lightweight not too heavy okay we're also going to need some fusible foam now again there are lots of companies out there that make these products my favorite one to use is matilda's own one because it's readily available for me here in australia but if you're in the us or maybe the uk you might have access to amazon a little bit easier than what we do here in australia and basically you can buy a uh, Bozel brand or even Pellon also have a foam. Now, I'm using a double-sided fusible foam today. You can use a single-sided fusible or you can use the sew-in-one. Um, also, Annie's has um, soft and stable, which is very similar to the Matilda's own as well. So just have a look around. If you still are having trouble finding it, there are some links down underneath this video where you can get this, um, this foam from. And as I said, you can use a sew-in-one, single-sided fusible or double-sided fusible. I'm using double-sided fusible today because it really doesn't make any difference. All right, so then you're going to need some cutting instructions and I've put together a PDF for you and you can find that over on our website, divanleedesignstudio.com. Okay, if you go to the free freebies tab there, you will find it there um, I've stopped using my blog over there for our PDF downloads because people were having trouble finding them so I just thought it'd be easier to put up a picture and then you can find the PDF that you're looking for there now once you've got your cutting instructions you're going to come back here and we're going to start cutting our fabrics out now I've done this off camera to make it a little bit easier and a little bit quicker of a video um, but get all your stuff cut, cut out and then come back and then you'll be able to sew along with me you're also going to need some general sewing supplies some of the ones that i like to use in any sort of bag making is my um my wonder clips and that makes it easy especially when using the foam than not trying to get pins through so it makes it super easy and quick to use you're also going to uh, need a marking device rotary cutter and just general um, sewing shears to help cut some stuff out maybe trim up your interfacing you're also going to need some pinking shears we do this as a bit of a finishing um, technique going to need some thread snips as well um, you, quick unpick just in case you never know it's good to have it on hand as I said a marking device and you're also going to need a couple of zippers um, that measure around 14 inches or bigger mine are 16 inch as you can see they're much larger, larger than the width of the bag but it means I've got plenty to work with the other thing that you're going to need 
which I forgot to pull out, is your basting glue. Uh, I use Roxanne's Basted Glue. This is a two-way applicator. It comes in many different um, bottles. It comes in a small squeezy bottle. It also comes in a larger squeezy bottle and also a dipper as well. And the one thing that I have not put out is my um, Wonder Tape, so double-sided uh, tape. And oh, you know what? Savannah had that the other day and she hasn't returned it. So I will get that and it'll be in here in later in the video. So I use the double sided tape for when I'm sewing zippers in. Um, it makes it super easy for placement and things don't move. All right, so head off to the website, grab your PDF with all your cutting instructions and let's get assembling this cute little bag. Okay, so we want to work out the size that we need. I've given you the cutting measurements for a 10 inch tablet. Okay, but if your tablet's a little bit bigger, you're going to want to make it bigger. All right, so I know that my tablet here is 10 inches. Let's say for argument's sake, yours is 10 inches as well. And you want to make a, a tablet case. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to get the measurement of your tablet and then you're going to add two and a half inches onto that. And the same goes for here. You're going to measure how big this is. Mine is uh, six inches, I believe. Yep, six inches. And then I've added an extra three and a half inches onto the top. Now, the reason I add an extra three and a half inches is because this accommodates for the outside pocket and also the handles. Now, you may have to adjust your handles a little bit to make them a little bit longer. Just add an inch onto those but most people have tablets around the 10 inch mark so this is going to be suitable for you so following the cutting instructions that i've given you in the free pdf from our website you should have the following you should have four of your zipper tabs okay measuring one and a half inches by two okay if they're a little bit longer that's okay you can trim them down you're also going to need um two pieces of fabric for your uh, handles and they measure four and a half inches by 12 and a half inches okay and they're also backed with the shape flex 101 so make sure that you've done that as well and the same for your zipper tabs okay so your shape flex for your handles is the same size as the fabric then you've got an exterior pocket and for that you are going to need uh, one piece that is four inches by 12 and a half and then you're going to need one piece that is five inches by 12 and a half inches of your exterior fabric and then the same in the lining now these pieces here you're going to put shape flex 101 on those okay and then you're just going to set them aside and yes I know I've got one piece folded in half I will show you what we do with that in just a moment then for our exterior fabric we need to have two pieces measuring nine and a half inches on the short end and on the long end 12 and a half inches and then that's going to be backed with our uh, fusible foam okay if you've got a sew in foam what you want to do is pin, a, pin your exterior fabric in place and then you're just going to stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around but if you've got a fusible foam it makes it nice and easy as you can see here and you're going to need two of those Okay, so that's for the front and one for the back of the bag. And then you're also going to need two pieces of lining measuring nine and a half inches on the short side and 12 and a half on the long side. And again, this is going to be backed with Shape Flex 101. All right, so now that you've got all of that stuff done, we are going to start with the assembly of the bag. So set all your pieces aside, except for your pocket pieces and your handles okay pop your zippers over there with your zipper tabs and we're ready to go all right so first things first is you want to grab your iron and iron pad and i don't think i mentioned that at the beginning but any sewing tutorial it's pretty much a given knowing you're going to need a sewing machine and you're going to need an iron all right so now that we um have our pocket pieces what you're going to do is you're going to take your four inch piece by 12 and a half inch and you're going to fold it together with the wrong sides touching and you're going to create a center piece just like that okay so that's got your center crease in there i don't know if you can see it but it's a slight crease there and then we're going to bring our raw edges into that center crease now if you're having trouble 
a tool that I like to use when I'm making creases. You can see that that, that is creasing quite nicely, but I do actually like to use a clapper. Okay, and a clapper is this piece of wood here. I'll put a link down below where you can get these. Sometimes they're stained, sometimes they're just raw wood, um, but these have a little bit of weight to them and they help set creases. And I use them a lot in my bag making process. Okay, so what you do is you just place that down and then you bring that raw edge into the center and then you grab your clapper and you just put that on there, hold it on. So what this does is it actually traps the heat in there and helps set the crease and it helps set the crease without having your iron on your fabric so you don't scorch your fabric and you can see there that that's staying quite nicely so you can imagine when you're doing handles or you're doing um, something like this where you've got to have a lot of creases in it or even if you're dressmaking and you're making a pleated skirt or a pleated set of slacks um, with the pleat down the front you can actually use your clapper to really set that that crease and that's mostly what it's used for but I've incorporated it into my bag making especially with um, credit card slots and stuff like that it just makes it so much easier to handle at the sewing machine and it also makes it easy to handle when setting that crease and you just leave it on for about you know 20 seconds or so as long as you want you can put a little bit of pressure on it that also helps as well just with your hand and it just takes that whole risk um, factor out of scorching your fabric with your iron uh, one thing to note too, if you are using any interfacings that you haven't used before, just do a little bit of a test patch. Um, I know that I'm pretty safe with a medium heat on my iron for all of um, my interfacings that I use because I've been using them for many years and um, and most interfacings come with the manufacturer's instructions anyway so you can have a look at that. Okay, and then again, I'm just going to put that clapper onto there. You can run it backwards and forwards if you have to. Um, I just may mainly work with the crease that I'm working with. So I'm working with the top one now. So I'm making sure that it's on there. And then I'll move. And you can see it just holds it in quite nicely. Okay, so once you've done that, we're going to fold it back over onto itself. And we're going to line up those edges there. And then we're going to set that crease again even though we set it when we started with the the first crease we want to reset that just to give it a little bit more staying together power and then grab my clapper all right so set that aside with your pocket pieces so now what we're going to do is we're going to make our handles now the first thing that we need to do is we need to come down to our short end now you can get a ruler or you can um just eyeball it but if you're not sure about what quarter inch looks like, grab a ruler and just make a mark at each of your short ends. Just like that. And then all we're going to do is we're going to roll that over and we're going to create a crease. And then I'm going to grab my Roxanne's basic glue and I'm going to put a couple of little dots there and that's going to help hold that in place. Now, little is the operative word there. You do not need a lot of this, okay? It will just work beautifully with a couple of little dots. It's just to help it hold in place while we're making all our other creases. Okay, and then once that's done, you just dry it with the iron. And then again, we're going to roll this end up. Okay, and you're gonna repeat the exactly the same thing with the other handle. So the next thing that we need to do is just fold that in half. And we're just gonna create our center crease, just like we did with the top part of the front pocket piece. Okay, and we don't need to set this with the clapper at this stage. You can if you want to, if you're having trouble, you can. But we're pretty good at this stage. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to just fold this in with our raw edges. And we're going to use the clapper at this stage to set our seam not our seam our crease and then we do the same for the other side okay so once we've done that we're going to fold it over on itself and give that a press okay so that's our handles done and prepped next we will be sewing them so what we're going to do is we're just going to get a couple of our wonder clips and we're just going to 
pop a couple along there. Okay, so now that we've got our Wonder Clips on, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch an eighth of an inch all the way along this edge, okay, and then all the way along this edge. Okay, don't worry about doing our short edges at the moment. We are just doing our long edges and we're doing it an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Okay, leave your Wonder Clips in and just slowly work your way down. Okay, and as I said, we're going to repeat that for both our handles. Now that we have sewn that down both sides, you can see that there, our handles are now complete. What you need to do is get rid of all your long threads and then you're going to set them aside. And next we are going to work on our front pocket zipper. So we want all our pieces for our front pocket. We need a zip, we need the piece that we creased, we need two of our zipper tabs, we need a lining, and we need our exterior fabric. For the meantime, we're just gonna set our lining and um, exterior out of the way, and also our folded piece, and we're going to just work on our zipper. All right, so starting up at the end that has the zipper stop on it, we are just going to trim that off, because we don't want that piece of metal there. Okay, and we can chuck that away. Then we're going to take one of our zipper tabs and we're just gonna finger press that and then grab our marking pen or chalk or whatever you're using. And we're just gonna put a line on that. Then we're going to grab our ruler and we're going to make a line on our zip a quarter of an inch away from our cut edge. Okay, and then we're going to place our folded zipper tab down, matching those lines up. And then we're just going to lift that up and make sure that our lines are matching just try to get that it's lining up with that line as best as you can okay and I'm pretty good there and then I'm just going to grab a couple of pins and I'm going to pop that in okay and then I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch that down into place okay so once you've done that you can take your pins out and then we're just going to fold that back over and then we're going to grab our pinking shears and we're just going to trim that even or as close as you can get to even with the zipper tape okay without cutting into the zipper tape so basically what we've got now is a little zipper tab it's all done and dusted we don't need to worry about sewing this up or anything like that okay and we can now see that we've got only a quarter inch there and then we've only got these two bits of fabric to sew through when we construct our bag all right so we've got our first zipper tab on and the next thing that we need to do is worry about our next one all right so i'm gonna to make it super easy not have to worry about doing any math or anything like that this is the way i do it all the time because i'm lazy when it comes to math i don't want to think about it <laughs> at all so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on how it's going to go into my front pocket okay so I've got that on there and I'll just put a wonder clip on there just to hold it in place so it doesn't move on me and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other zipper tab I'm going to fold it in half I'm going to mark the line like I normally would and then I'm going to do a mock up of how it's going to look okay so I'm going to place the raw edges okay so it's folded in half that's how it's going to look in the in the bag like this end okay and I'm just going to line up my raw edges and then I'm just going to make a little mark where that's going to end up okay so that's where I need to sew it on to okay and then what I'm going to do is get my ruler lay my ruler on there for a quarter of an inch okay so you can see there i'm on quarter of an inch and then i'm just going to make another line and that is where i'm going to cut okay so the first line that we marked is where our zipper tab is going to sit the second line that we marked which is closest to the raw edge is where we're going to cut but before we do that we need to open our zip okay and that's why I mark the lines because sometimes you can lose your place and then I'm just going to snip that off and snip that end off and chuck it away all right so now what I'm going to do is I am going to get a pin 
and you can sew this on your sewing machine if you want I generally don't worry about it I'm gonna get a pin and put that in there and that's gonna hold them together if you are having trouble now you can stitch where you've got to sew and that will hold those two zip pieces together okay that's another tip that you can do but now I'm comfortable enough to line up those lines okay and I can see that they're working really well there and then I'm just going to get a couple of pins and again I'm going to pin that into place okay and then I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch that down okay now make sure that it is in the right place you can double check that it doesn't matter if it's out by a little bit of a smidgen because we can trim it off a little bit if we need to okay but I can see that my crease is matching up with that line and I'm good to go just make sure before you do any cutting or anything that you move your zipper pull into the center of the zip and then that way you won't run the risk of cutting it off like I have in the past all right so I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch that down so we've stitched that down we can now get rid of our threads we can now you can see now that our zip is working all right and we just need to trim up our edges so again with the pinking shears right up to that zipper tape okay and that is our zip done okay the next step is we're going to install our zipper into our um, front pocket okay so you're going to need your folded piece you're also going to need your lining and your exterior fabric the first piece that we're going to put in is our folded piece so what we're going to do with that is we are going to take that and we are going to place our zip in there okay and then I just will get a wonder clip on that end and a wonder clip on this end now you don't want to come too close you don't want your fabric too close to the teeth so you can see down this end I've got enough space there to open the zipper pull will go along there and not get caught in the fabric so you want to make sure that it's not too close so to make sure that you um, you can have your zipper closed at this stage it's fine um, that might be easier for you so basically you just sort of eyeball it so you make sure that your raw edges are lining up at the end here and that your um, your zipper teeth aren't too close to the folded edge of the fabric pop a wonder clip on there and normally I would use um, some double-sided tape in this instance uh, but I've actually run out according to my daughter she used the last of it so and didn't tell me um, but she had no idea I was going to be using it so this is another good use for your basic glue as well so what you can do is you can just go along and at the top of the zipper tape not down near the teeth you can put a couple of little dots just like so and then you can get your iron and you can just set it in place alternatively you can use pins if you don't have the basted glue or double-sided tape that's fine and then I will just press that down like so and I'll just grab my iron and give that a press on the other side but you want to turn the heat down on your iron okay this is a nylon zip and we want to be very mindful of that okay I will just give that a quick press on the back side okay and that is holding that in place now and the good thing is you can adjust it if you need to and you can iron from the front as well if you don't touch those zipper teeth okay all right so that's sitting in place and to make sure that it doesn't move on the back I'm just going to put a couple of little spots on there as well and give that another bit of a press and that's going to hold it in place now what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the sewing machine and you'll need to put your zipper foot on to your machine for this and we're going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from this folded edge now the way I like to get that so accurate is I run my zipper foot up along the edge of the teeth or as close as I can get and that usually gives me a nice straight line all the way across you don't need to um, reverse at the beginning at the end just sew a straight line all the way across and we're not going to worry about this top edge just yet because that will help us with the assembly of the front pocket that is now stitched into place 
and we can see that our zipper opens and closes really nicely. Now that we've sewn that, we are going to attach the bottom of our pocket. We're going to grab our exterior fabric and we're going to lay that right sides up. Then we're going to get our zip and we're going to lay the teeth face down. This one's a little bit easier. You won't necessarily need to use the glue for this. Again, I would normally um, use Wonder Tape or double-sided acid-free tape, but as I've run out, I can't use that. So I'm just going to use clips and we're just making sure that all our raw edges are lining up on either end and popping our Wonder Clips on, like so. And then we're going to sandwich it, grabbing our lining fabric and with the right sides down and then we'll just clip that into place as well so what we're going to do now is we're going to head back over to the sewing machine and with your zipper foot still attached you're going to stitch that down so once you've done that you're going to open this back up and you're going to finger press that down you can see there that our pocket is now done now I'm going to give this a press from the back side just to make sure that that lining is out of the way and then we're going to top stitch it down using an eighth of an inch um, seam allowance like I've done up here and that will finish that off so we've done that now and now what we need to do is we need to open our zip and then we're going to bring our lining and our exterior up to the right sides facing and then we're just going to grab a couple of pins and we're going to pin our long edge together and then we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch a quarter inch seam allowance. So we've done that now we're going to get rid of our long threads and then take our pins out and then with our pinking shears we are just going to trim along that edge without cutting into our stitching and that's going to reduce some of the bulk when we attach it to the front of our bag. All right so now what we're going to do is we're just going to reach in and we're going to pull that out so once that is done you can now zip it closed and you can manipulate around with it okay until you have got your seam sitting nice and flush okay this is what they call rolling the seams I find it easier to get a chopstick or a poking device and just run it along that seam I use a scrapbooking tool I think they call this a boner um, crease maker and um, yeah, I just run that along and you can see there that my lining, you can't see my lining on the outside. So it's now sitting nice and even and taking some of that bulk out with the pinking shears will give you a nicer finish when we stitch this down. Now that we've got that done, what you're going to do is you're just going to set that aside and we're going to start working on the outside of the bag. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make some marks on our exterior fabric and also our lining all right so to do that we need our ruler and we need our marking device and we also need our scissors all right so if you've got directional fabric you need to find the bottom of your directional fabric mine is here okay so we need to find that on both pieces the front and the back okay and we're going to take our ruler we're going to flip it over, making sure that we are marking the bottom. So I've got things going in all directions here, but there's a couple of things that are up the right way. So we've got this sewing machine and we've also got this um, model here and the heart is also going. It's on the side, but you can see that it's going that way. So I know that this is the bottom of my um, exterior fabric. Now, we're not marking on the short sides, we're marking on the long side. If you are going to think you're going to get confused when you flip it over, just put a pin in the bottom of your fabric. So I can see on this one, the same thing again. So because I'm not working with this straight away, I'm going to pop a pin there so I know this is where I, at what end I need to mark. All right, so flipping that over, because it's easier for you to see on this side, I'm going to grab my ruler and um, I'm going to mark i want to get one that you can actually see that's not too reflective all right and i'm going to mark an inch so i'm just going to come in here and i'm going to line the inch mark up on this side and this here is an inch as well so it's come down an inch and i'm just going to make sure that my sides and my bottom are lining up on that inch mark and then i'm just going to get my pen and i'm going to mark a square 
and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the opposite end. Now we're not doing it on the short end, it's on our long end, so be, be very mindful of that. The pin in the bottom where you've got a mark and where you've got a cut from is the best way to go because I can see that pin and I know that's where I need to do it. Okay, I'm also going to repeat that for this one as well. And I'm also going to do it for my lining as well. And what this is going to do is actually box up our um, bottom of our bag. And that's going to give us a little bit more space in there. So if you've got a little keyboard that goes with your tablet, or you maybe have it in a, um, a protective case, it's going to give you room in there. So now that we've made all those marks, I'm just going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut on that line. And the reason I use my scissors for this is because I'm not going to accidentally go past that one inch point. And that's going to make my boxed doesn't look right double check that see it's a little bit out so i just the more and more you do things the more you become to with your eye you'll quickly see that there's an error so i went a little bit too high on that one so i've had to redo it and now i know that it's correct and same on this side now we have our exterior fabrics with the notches down the bottom and our lining fabric the same as well. For now, we're just going to set our lining aside and one of our exterior pieces. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add our front pocket and front handle. So grab one of your handles and your previously made front pocket. And what we're going to do is we are going to, so you can see here, this is going to fold under. So that'll be the bottom of our bag. And what we want to do is we want to come up about half an inch from that. Okay, maybe a touch more. And I just sort of eyeball this at this point. We want to come up, so from this edge here where we've cut out, okay, we want to come up about half an inch. So what I do is I just pop my ruler on there. Hopefully you're not getting too much glare. I make sure that everything is sitting straight on my mat so I line up the bottom here with a line on my mat and then I line up my ruler with that bottom edge there and then I want to make sure that the half inch mark is, is sitting right in the corner where I've cut out okay and then I know that everything is nice and straight and then I can place my pocket on there Okay, just holding the ruler in place. I'm going to grab a couple of wonder clips. You can draw a line there if you find that easier. I just find it easier to use my ruler and do it all in one go. Okay. Now I'm really focusing down here at this stage because I want the, that bottom of the bag to be touching every part of that ruler without me having to move the ruler. I'm going to adjust this. Okay, so make sure that you pin the bottom first. Or clip it and I know that I can move that away now and then I can adjust accordingly up here now I want to make sure that all my raw edges are lining up so I'll put one where the zipper tabs are and I'll put some at the top here and then another one here and then I'm going to smooth that out making sure that everything is laying nice and flat and again i'm going to pop one in where the zipper tab is and then i'm going to pop one top there and then one in the middle okay so i've got quite a few things on there all right the next thing that i want to put in is my handle so now what i'm going to do is going to come in three inches from the edge and it's about two inches down that this is going to the top of this will be sitting so you can see there one two give or take a little bit okay that's close enough is near enough for this so yep that's two inches and in the center i'll check again that's two inches so i'm good to go with the placement of my little bag here all right so my little little bag my little pocket sorry um so now what we want to do is we want to attach our handles so i don't want really long handles on this i want them down a little bit so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in three inches from the edge so we've got one two three and then i'm just going to pop a flat pin there okay and i'm just going to pop it into the edge of the um 
top of the fabric there and then I'm going to do the same on this edge here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my handle and I'm going to bend it and then I'm going to twist it and then these handles are going to sit so this edge of the handle is going to sit underneath here like so okay and this is to stop it from getting twisted so it's going to sit down about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch uh, let me just three quarters of an inch we might go half an inch so we just want to slide it on there under there by half an inch so I'm going to slide that under and I can feel the edge of that there and I can see that that is half an inch and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that pin that I already used and I'm going to pin that handle into place like so and I pin it like that because it won't move out of position then okay then I'm going to bring this up making sure that there's no twist and I'm going to bring that handle over to here and again I'm going to go down half an inch okay and then I'll grab that pin and then I'm going to place that there like so so you can see there we've got oh I missed it we'll try that again <laughs> just double check my measurements so three inches half an inch and I can feel that that edge underneath there One pin. there we go now it's in so I, you can see there that we've got a little handle for our bag okay so now that we've got that all in place what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch along the bottom here and stitch that in place and then we're going to stitch across, across the top here and stitch that in place now when we get to our handles you don't need to back stitch or anything like that um, you just need to go straight across but make sure that your handle is sitting nice and flat just here okay and then we're going to base down each edge just to hold this together so when we come to final assembly it's not going to be moving around on you all right so let's head over to the sewing machine and get that stitched down our little pouch is our little um, front pocket is now on there and it's all secured in place our handle is secured in place as well so now you can sit this part aside and then you're going to grab your other uh, exterior fabric and handle and what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of little marks so we're going to again come down two inches from the top just like we did with the other one and three inches in and pop a pin and at this stage I'm going to actually just make a little dot as well that I can see there okay so I know that that is the point of my so it's two inches down and three inches from that point I'm going to do the same on the other side and the reason I've got that little mark there is because I want my handle to come down half an inch from that point so just making sure that I've got everything where I need it to be I will just pop that little dot there Okay, and I know that's probably a really weird way of doing it, but it's just a reminder for me. Otherwise, I will go past that and, you know, I might put the mark down here and then I'll go past it. So again, we're going to grab our um, handle and I'm just going to take off these threads. And then I'm going to lay it flat and I'm going to bring it up. And I'm going to have the outside of my handle lining up against that pin. And then from that dot, I'm going to come down about half an inch and I can grab my ruler pop that on there and I can see that that's half an inch and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop my pin through that and that's going to hold it in place and then I'm going to do exactly the same over this side so we can see that that is lining up nicely I'll just get that pin in there hold that in place now, you may need to pop a wonder clip up here or a pin. Um, I generally like to use a wonder clip just to hold that in place, like so. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we are going to actually do a little box. So I'm going to make it about one inch up from the edge of my handle, and then I'm just going to draw a line. And hopefully you can see that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch on that line stitch on the line I've already stitched stop about an eighth of an inch from the bottom 
stitch along there now be careful because this has got a folded seam in it so you need to be take it slow and just keep your needle in the down position okay and then come back up to here and I'm just going to back stitch on this side here and then I'm going to do exactly the same on this side here all right so we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to draw that box now just don't forget when you get down the bottom here just leave your needle in the down position and just take it nice and slow because you are going through a few layers of fabric there and you probably can feel that it's a little bit bulky so just be aware of that that you don't go too fast and end up breaking a needle um, if you need to put more clips in by all means put more clips in you can see that it's a little bit lifting up a bit so just for added security I'm just going to add that and then I know that it's not going to move on me or anything like that all right so I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and stitch that down now what we need to do is we need to trim off all our excess threads we can see that that's now in place and nicely secured so it's not going to come off and next step is to put our zipper in all right so you might want to just move your um Oh, don't forget to get your threads off the back as well. I always forget that. I'm terrible for that. All right, get rid of all those. All right, they're gone. Okay, now what we need to do is we just need to make sure that our handles are out of the way. So basically all I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to grab a pin and um, just pop that there and keep that out of the way. All right, and I'm going to do the same on this side as well. And it just makes it easier. If it's out of the way, you don't have to worry about it. You know it's not going to pop up. It's not going to get tangled up or anything like that. Now we're up to putting our zipper into our top of our bag. So the first piece that you want to get is the piece of exterior fabric that you have with your pocket on it. You're going to take your zip and you're going to put it with the teeth facing down. You're going to grab a one, couple of wonder clips and you're going to pop that into place. And you want to make sure that the zipper tape is lining up with the edge of your bag and then you're going to get a lining piece and with the right side with the right side facing down we are going to pop that on so exterior right sides facing up zipper teeth down lining down and making sure that all of your zipper tape is lining up with both the edge of your exterior and lining fabric and if you need to put lots of wonder clips on put one wonder clips until your heart is content all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to change from our quarter inch foot back to our zipper foot and we are going to stitch all the way along here making sure that you back stitch at the beginning and at the end okay, so that is now um, stitched in place now to get rid of some of this bulk I'm going to take my pinking shears and I'm just going to snip along the edge without going into my stitching and get rid of some of that bulk. So what happens with that is when we flip it over and we go to top stitch it down, it'll just make it a little bit easier to do that. All right, so now you need to grab your iron and your ironing pad and we're going to press this out of the way from the zipper so we have a nice neat finish and then we're going to top stitch that into place and what that's going to do is that's just going to keep the lining away from the zip it's going to um, make for easy use of the zip when we're using our bag okay now just be aware if you're using um, double-sided fusible you want to be careful not to um, stick all your lining down okay so you just want to give it a quick press out of the way and then come back to the front and give that a good press now head over to the sewing machine and top stitch that down so that is all top stitched down now what we need to do is we need to take our other exterior piece and we are going to lay that down okay and we're going to sandwich that together using our wonder clips as I said the more the merrier making sure everything is lining up with our raw edges grab our lining fabric and with the right sides down clip that into place and it makes it easier when you're putting a, the lining on because everything's already clipped into place so you're just pinching and the clip up and uh, just lining that lining fabric up nice and quickly and again we'll head over to the sewing machine and we will stitch that down and then come back press and 
top stitch. Okay, so again, we've stitched that down and we're just going to get rid of some of our um, excess thread, uh, excess bulk from here without cutting into our stitching that we just stitched. And then we'll roll this over, press it in place and top stitch. Okay, so you wanna make sure that your lining is away from your um, zip. So give that a little bit of a tug. Like so smooth it all down so it's sitting nice and flat. And then just give it a bit of a press. And just do a little bit at a time because you don't want it to be rolling or anything like that. You want it to be sitting nice and flat. And you've got those handles there that are probably a little bit harder to, to get it to sit flat, but you'll get there in the end. All right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over and I'm going to top stitch that down like I did this side here. We have now got our zipper in there and we can see that that is working beautifully. No lining or anything is catching in the zip, so that's nice. All right, so the next thing is to do is to assemble our bag. All right, so we want to bring our exterior fabrics together. And if you're using double-sided, you can see that it's just stuck a bit and I can just pull it aside. We've got it out of the way for top stitching, so it doesn't matter now. And what we're going to do is we're going to line all our raw edges up. So this is where the clips come in handy because you're not going through that bulk. We're going to put our quarter inch foot back onto our machine and we're going to stitch this all closed. But first things first, make sure you leave your zipper open. Did I do that? No, open your zipper up. <laughs> Okay, you want that to be open to at least halfway so you can pull that through. Okay, don't forget to do that, otherwise you will be unpicking. Um, all right, the next, as I said, we're going to clip this all the way around. Now, when we get to where our zip is, I want you to just make sure that this is go the the tab is going towards the zipper teeth, so it's going to go towards the exterior. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but you just sort of get a little bit of a fold in it like so. Okay, and then just pop a clip on there to hold it in place. All right, and then we're going to do exactly the same over here. We're going to align all our raw edges up. And because this is the, the lining, um, we're going to be turning our bag through here. So what we wanna do over here on this first one is we're just going to leave a gap of about three three to four inches i usually go about three and a half and we're going to leave that open so leave that open and that's where we're going to turn our bag through okay now that looks like a very small hole this will go through there not a problem it's you've got to give it a little bit of a you know gentle persuasion as they say to get it to to come so when you come down here you want to um, back stitch at the beginning at the end now I generally do two back stitches so I'll, I'll stitch forward come back and then stitch forward again okay and here I'll stitch forward go back and stitch forward and end it and then jump over to here now the reason I do that is because we are working with the foam it's a little bit bulkier and makes it a little bit easier to get it through and your seam won't pop and we're doing a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around so just don't forget that that's where you've got to leave it open um, I generally use pins also on the lining because I find that the clips are a little bit heavy and it can actually move your fabric around alternatively you can leave your hole down the bottom if that's where you want it I generally like to leave it on the sides it just makes it easier for me um, I, I, if I do it on the bottom I tend to forget because I generally don't mark when I'm sewing something for myself so you might be the same so either the bottom or the side is fine And then we're just going to work our way around. Until we get back to the foam and then we'll start using clips again. Now, once we're back to the foam, remember we want that zipper tab to be going to the exterior fabric. Okay, so just push that in like so. Okay, and then just pop a clip there straight away so you know it's going to hold. Now, when you get around to these um, bits here, they are a little bit bulky, so just take it nice and easy. Don't rush it, okay? Because if you rush it, you possibly could break a needle, and I would hate for you to do that and then wreck your gorgeous fabric. Okay, make sure that everything is lining up nicely. 
All right, and now what we'll do is we'll head over to the sewing machine and we're going to do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. Now you're not gonna sew these little squares here. Okay, we're gonna sew them together last. All right, so remembering to go all the way around, leaving an opening. And when I start, I will actually start here. Okay, I will stitch down and I will back stitch here. And when I start over here, I will back stitch at all each of these corners. That's just going to stop your seams from popping when you're turning it out and um, doing the final assembly. All right, so I'm going to start here, work my way around and finish here, making sure that I do a back stitch at the beginning, at the end, and in all of my corners. And I will be back in just a moment. We are at the final step. So basically, now what we need to do before we turn our bag through, we need to box up our corners. Now, if you're anything like me, you've probably jumped from corner to corner, get rid of all your long threads so they're out of your way. And now we are going to be ready to box up our corners. So all we're going to do for that is we are going to grab our little corners. Okay. And we're going to pop our fingers in and then we're going to line up our seams and we're just going to nest them. So you can see there one's going one way, one's going the other. We're going to either pop a pin, but on the foam side, I would be more inclined to pop a clip there. And then we're just going to stitch a quarter inch across reversing at the beginning at the end and you're going to repeat that for all of your corners so we've now boxed up all our corners and i also like to just get rid of some of the bulk from this and i will just grab my pinking shears and just trim a little bit off about an eighth of an inch okay and that's just going to get rid of some of that bulk as well okay and now we are ready to turn that through so get rid of all of your threads that uh, might be in the way. So that is all done. Now we're going to go through our opening and we're going to reach through to our exterior and we're going to pull that through. Now don't forget, you've probably got some pins in there. So just be careful not to um, get yourself with those. Just maneuvering around mine. Okay, and just grab one side and just pull that through. And push all our little corners out get in there and poke them out with your fingers get out the zipper out now lining in all right you can take those pins out for the handles now okay before you end up sticking yourself with them make sure that all your corners are popped out so you'll need to get your your um, fingers right into those corners you can see there I'm just popping those out and on this side as well get right up into those zipper tabs okay and the same on this side might need a little bit of help from a chopstick or a poking tool get that out okay all right so that is our little bag all done with our little handles okay so you can see there so what we need to do now is we need to get our side that we've left open and we need to stitch that close now there's two ways you can do that you can um when i find it there it is <laughs> i'm looking at the wrong end okay so get your corners poked out now you can do that one or two ways you can just machine um like pull your seam in so it'll just fold in nice and neat for you okay and i just hold that where i've reversed and it'll just fold over by a quarter of an inch and pop a couple of pins in there and then i'll just stitch that close with the sewing machine or if you want you can hand stitch that um and you just do a simple ladder stitch for that but because this is just something that um, i'm going to be using no one else is going to see it i'm just going to pop a couple of pins in there and then i'm just going to stitch as close to the edge as possible um, about an eighth of an inch and that will just seal that up just nicely and then that give it a really good press after you've done that and then that is it we are done we'll get rid of all of our long threads so anything that's going to get caught in any zip or anything like that we'll get rid of that right. pop our lining back inside because that's all stitched together now so you want to make sure that your lining is laying all flat. Now it's not going to go up near your zipper because we've top stitched that close. So we know that that's okay. 
um, but I like to get my hand in there and make sure that all my corners are poked out before I do my final pressing. I want to make sure that my lining is sitting in there quite nicely and not all wrinkled up and pushed all the way down to the bottom and then I'm going to give it a really good press. Now I'm making sure that I'm not running over any of the zippers or anything like that because I don't want that to um, melt the zipper, not that I've come this far. Okay, and I often put it inside the bag as well. My iron is generally on a low heat at this stage, so just be aware of that. Um, if you're using double-sided fusible, your um, lining will now stick down inside. I'll just give that a really good press. And then my bag is ready to use. So my zipper is working. I've still got some threads hanging around and you really want to make sure that you get rid of those because they can be um, problematic when it comes to your zip. Okay, I've got handles on there that aren't twisted. Okay, and now I can pop anything that I want in there. So I can pop my tablet in and that goes in nicely. I can pop my keyboard in and that'll zip up and then in the front I can pop some pens poking out till not that I know what I'll need that for that um, and anything else that I might need in there and that's it that is our little iPad bag it's got foam in it to protect the the front of your iPad and it's got handles for easy carrying Okay, so thank you so much for joining me today. I do hope you enjoyed making our little pouch for our tablets with the handles on it. Now, if you do make one, don't forget to tag me over on the social media such as Facebook and Instagram. I'm on both of those platforms. We do have a group where you can share all your makes from the channel um, and whatever else you're making as well. Um, that is called Dee Dee's Quilting and Crafting Group. If you like this video today, don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. Leave me a comment and tell me what you thought. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon beside it and then that way you won't miss out on any future posts. And as you can see right now, there is a tip jar rolling across maybe consider leaving me a tip so I can contribute more to the channel alrighty that's it from me this week have a great week everybody and I'll see you all again next time bye for now